Welcome back to The Right Hook. Uh, we're broadcasting, of course, today from News Talks Studios in Opera Lane in Cork. And if you're passing by, uh, do come and say hello. And particularly over the next 30 minutes, of course, presidential candidate Dana is with me. Uh, Dana, um, I, I was wondering, how should we actually address you? Because obviously we address you as Dana in your professional life, but how does the presidential candidate want to be addressed? Well, Dana's fine. People know me as Dana. I've lived quite a while with that. So, you know, I'm just ordinary person myself. Okay, but Rosemary Skellen or Rosemary Brown or Dana's best? Well, Dana's fine. I think okay. that's how people first know me and that's, that's fine. Okay. Look, you've done this 14 years ago and in or about 14,000, 14% of the votes, 170,000 votes, uh, beating Labour, uh, you were in third place. That, I would have thought that was a pretty sound performance. The latest opinion poll has you at seven. Mm. Why, why do you think that is? Well, I think when I got f- almost 15% of the vote, I think I went in there at 6%. So I have never gone into anything high up in the polls, George, never. And when I won the seat in Europe, I think, again, I was around about 6% or 7% possibly. So I, I just don't take any notice of the polls. But All right. OK, and that's a reasonable answer. But when I was watching you uh, on the Late Late Show, we leave Vincent Brown aside for, for the tape, but when I was watching you on the Late Late Show, when Mr. Tuberty sort of said to you, do you want to be president? I detected a hesitation. Um, do you really want to be president? I see you know me too well, George. That's <laughs> the problem. Well, you know, it, it is a huge responsibility to be the president of the people because what you do is you embody the people. Yeah. And that is a huge responsibility. And anyone who goes into it without being aware of that, and I think it really, it's it struck me that, gosh, you know, it's a great honour. So there what was a, a bit of a hesitancy there. Well, I, I, I think anybody would have to think about that, you know. Because but, 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 I mean, you've entered, so, like, yes. you must want it. I would like very much to be able to represent the people. I think that I can... I think I, they know that I focus anything I've ever done, the first presidential election, the European election. I did it because I wanted to be a voice for the people and as much as possible to protect the people. I, I saw you that night and, and knowing you off television, as it were, um, you're very passionate about the constitutional and stuff. For the next 20 minutes or so, can we park that? Because we, we know where you stand. You've made that very clear now. Could, yeah. I, could I just say that the only reason I talk about it is because that constitution protects the people of this country. That's the only reason to talk about it. Yeah, but, but All right, but I was going to kind of half talk about it because the, you, you had two books with you. you. You had the Irish constitution and the European one. But it did strike me that you sort of see Europe as some uh, sort of creeping danger for this country. And wouldn't it be strange if we had a president who was a Eurosceptic with a government totally committed to Europe, a Europe that has bailed us out of our present financial impasse? No? Well, you know, as I, as I said, we didn't go into Europe as beggars. We went in and we gave our territorial waters, our fishing rights, which is worth billions, probably worth more than we ever got. So we, we did not go in as beggars. And, I, and I'm not anti-Europe. I have always said, and, and we've done interviews before, I have always said that Europe, the concept of Europe is good. Uh, we want to be in Europe, but to be controlled in every detail, that was never part of the deal. So I'm, I'm not against it. I'm for the people of this country. But we voted for it, though, didn't we? I mean, like rightly or wrongly, we voted. Well, we it. voted Nice 1, and then we voted Nice 2, which was yeah. undemocratic. And then we voted Lisbon, and then we voted Lisbon 2, which was undemocratic. But you were opposed to all those, wasn't I was that? opposed, And you yes. would remain opposed, it seems to me. I'm opposed to anything that takes the right of self-determination from the Irish sovereign nation and from the people. That's all. I'm not against cooperating, and I'm not against being in Europe. But I think if the people had been listened to, if the people had been allowed to have the last say, which they should, we wouldn't have had a, a blanket okay. guarantee or a bailout. All right, but but you see, it's it, the thing about this job, which is so circumscribed by the Constitution. Um, you said it. 
You said that word there. I did. Huh? You did. Yeah, well, let me finish it, though. <laughs> let me finish it. It is circumscribed what you can do. I mean, if you're opposed to these referenda, which were subsequently passed, wouldn't you be better off running as an MEP than running as president? Because then you could do something about it. You can't do anything about it from Oris and Uchter on. I mean, I know you say that you can, but the reality is you, Dan, President Dana, can't. You, you can't roll back time. You're quite right in that, George. But the day of our nomination, a statement was made by the president of the commission saying that no national government was able to take control of their own economic and budgetary policies. Mm. Now, that is a huge step that the people of Ireland never agree to at any stage, that macro and micro management of yes. our money. And you're, we're sitting in a, a beautiful city of Cork here where families are literally choosing between the mortgage and food. But, but, but I mean, uh, Mary Davis actually suggested, and she's a different candidate, I don't want to go there, but she suggested she wouldn't sign the budget into law, which is beyond our powers. Just the same as you, many of these issues that you now talk about, these micro and macroeconomic issues, Issues. The president couldn't refuse to sign them anyway. No, no. Uh, what I'm sign them. what I'm saying is the final say and the reference to the people seems to have been shoved under the carpet here, and that's what the constitution protects. It's. I only mention the Constitution, and if I wasn't mentioning it, no other candidate is mentioning it, and that's the primary duty of the President, okay. to protect the people. All right. One of the things, and I know today, in essence, you're, you, formally your campaign is launched, Yes. but the big difference I find with you is I can't find a poster of you anywhere, and I, I can't find pictures of you in the paper, you know, wherever you are. Like, I don't see a Dana campaign. Is that because of lack of enthusiasm or what? Oh, not at all. Not at all. Because I was late coming in, we had to get our team in place. And I did state that to put up posters around this country, George, it would cost between 160 and 200,000 euro. And I can't. Hi, guys. There's two young lads knocking at the window there. Aye, okay. um, I, I couldn't ask... You're attracting a crowd, Dana. Well done. I, I and they're all young. I couldn't ask donations yeah. to put posters up, and I won't. So I'm not putting posters well, up. Well, uh, uh, campaign costs are suggested to be somewhere between a quarter and half a million. How much do you think Dana campaigns going well, to the cost? Political, and where are you going to get the money? The political parties may be able to do that because they have been preparing for this for some time. Plus... Independents are very disadvantaged in that what is considered a donation for an independent is not considered a donation for a political party. So, yes, they do have that amount of money stored up. I would, not, I would not be doing from? that from whatever we can give ourselves, Damien and I, and whatever the but public can give. But you're not wealthy people, Damien and you. No, and we are just going to cut our cloth. We need support on the ground. If I could say that the second tier of the presidency... And I'm not saying it's a lesser tier, but it is certainly a, a another tier, is the ambassadorial road, role of the president. Sure. Now that I can do with my eyes shut. I've been an ambassador for this country, and proudly so, for over 40 years. And it would be my intention, I'm known by my first name throughout the world, I'm known everywhere, sure. to gather together the other ambassadors in the arts, in, in the sure. cinema, uh, in okay. business, in, in sports, and make them a team that we're all pulling together here. I think we have to find common ground and pull together in the country and throughout the world but, but it, to promote it, Ireland. Right. So it, it, the, I just want to be clear here, because there is a suggestion by many people, and you're a kind of a, a one-topic candidate, that if Dana can't argue about the, comp the Constitution... You said she, that word again. I, I did, Jan. Go on, I've no other way of asking you the question. <laughs> uh, if Dana doesn't talk about the Constitution, she has nothing else to talk about. Well, what is the first the first uh, power? But we've agreed first, to park it. Come on. What's the, number two? If you read the Constitution, the first thing it says the president must do is maintain the Constitution and then serve the people and okay. serve their welfare. Right, okay. Why did you bridle uh, so much at my Mr. Tuberty sort of suggested Catholicism to you. Why did you bridle? Because I think, I think I'm quoting you correctly, I think you said something like why am I being asked that question? Yes. But why not? But I mean, why not ask it? Because 
all through my time as a as a European politician, I worked on regional policy. I brought in regional funding into the, my constituency. I brought in investment from outside of the country into my constituency. I worked on youth and culture and education and sport. Right. And the only thing that mostly appeared about me in the media was anything connected with my religious belief or my personal beliefs. I was not a point of reference for all of those things sure. that I was working on. But, but uh, that's very common. But I have a text from Raymond in Mill Street which says that there are many people who would vote for you but might not actually say to a poster they would vote for you because they might you know, think that they might be labelled in a particular way. Surely there's nothing wrong with the fact that you... You are a conservative, that you you are proud of your beliefs. Surely there's nothing wrong in saying that. There's absolutely and, nothing and wrong. telling young Tubridy to say, get lost, I believe this. What's wrong with it? I, I do believe this, and I think that there's almost a, a feeling that people who do have uh, religious belief and who do have particular positions on moral issues are considered somehow to be... Um, well, well, they're they're not represented in in most of the media. They're definitely not, right. and they're regarded almost in a way in which they feel ridiculed. Yeah, but it, you know, here and now, are you essentially looking for the votes? And I don't know how many people there are, but I suspect there's quite a lot of them. Are you looking for people? And I'm saying this word, and I shouldn't, but of of conservative views to support you, people who share your views about family, about religion, that sort of thing. Do you see yourself as representing them primarily? Do I you? see myself as representing anyone yes, in the country. Yes, of course you do. But, but like in the same way as Fine Gael want Fine Gaelers to vote for them or Sinn Féin want Sinners to vote for them, you know, you're an independent, but at the same time, you, you, you carry some kind of tag and you yeah. carry the tag of defender of the Constitution, defender of family values, no? Because it's in the Constitution mm. and because I believe it. And if you talk to anyone that you meet on that street there, they will probably say the same thing, that the family in this country and in every country is the unit of society that provides stability. And if the family is broken and hurt and the society's broken and hurt. Yes, but but Dana um, you're running for president and mm. you're the president for all the people, right? This is a different Ireland even when you stood the last time. In 14 years we've seen an extraordinary change. We've seen a Minister for Education propose about Catholic schooling for instance. So you could foresee in the next seven years or 14 years, better still, President Dana uh, been forced to sign, or not be forced, but been asked to sign legislation that is not of your liking. How would you react to that? Abortion, uh, same-sex marriage, uh, already we're seeing British uh, passport holders for instance, they're taking mother and father out of passport applications. They're taking yeah. gender out of it uh, for fear of offending transgenders. Now, these are things that you would find very difficult, but you're the president now. Well, I, I found that in the parliament where they would not use the term mother. They wouldn't even include mother in any document and they wouldn't include family. And the constitution of our country belongs to the people of well, this country. But what would you do, like, if a piece of legislation comes on your desk, President Dana, and it is something that is absolutely, as far as you're concerned, you know, not on? What are you going to do? Because that's your personal belief. This has come from the other uh, two legs of the Iraq. Well, it, you're it the is. one leg and the other two are Dol and Shannon. What would you do? It is my personal belief. It also happens to be what is written in our constitution and only the people well, of this really. country, it is, and only the people of this country can decide whether that is changed. But you take any family group, George. I know that not everybody believes or thinks as I do. I respect that I don't expect them to. I'm simply asking that they respect that I'm allowed to believe what I do. Yeah, but, but we do, absolutely. But no, when, no, no. But I as president, say, it's different. You do, but in no, no. generally in the media, there's a dismissive attitude. Almost uh, people feel like a, a sense of warfare on people who do believe as I would believe. Yes, but, but see, Dana 
believing and President Diana believing are two different things. JFK faced this by being the first Catholic in the White House. He said, I am a president of the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Rome will not tell me what to do. And the American people believed him. But you know, you're saying that these values are particular to the Catholic belief. They're not. No, they're, the f- they're particular to, to to you. I'm only talking about you, you see. I, it's not about other Catholics standing for president. It's you standing but, for but president. But it isn't particular to what the Catholic faith. What would you do? Faith. I mean, you don't, you, don't, um, you don't agree with abortion. You don't agree, I suspect, with same-sex marriage. So what about if something comes along the line and says, we're going to introduce this, that, or the other thing. Well, I mean, you, you signed it as president because it's come to you from the houses of the Iraq. Well, I, no? I can assure you that neither of those would ever appear before me in the next seven years Why that not? I know. Of course they would. Because the people of the country on abortion have clearly spoken, as our Attorney General said in Europe, three times they've had a, um, a, a referendum right. and three times they have refused. And in a recent poll, the people understand that a okay. mother is never refused. Can I give you one? Can I just All finish right. this? Okay. Sorry, Sorry George. My apologies. Um, a, a mother will never be refused treatment, even if it results in the death of unintentional death of her child. So people understand oh, yeah. that abortion that is being pushed Ireland. is on demand and the people of Ireland do not want it and, and, and I'm very glad that they okay, don't. Okay, but, but here's one that's going to come across your desk in the next seven years, almost certainly uh, that uh, priests are going to be asked to break the seal of the confessional. That's going to come across your desk because the government have already said they're going to introduce it. So where are you now when that's on your desk? Well, are you I, going to sign it? I would have to say first I have and to foremost push it. Would you sign it? First I have to and it. foremost the the fact that there, w- there must be a way of protecting our children, of course, is first and foremost. And the fact that it had, has not been done for whatever reason is contemptible. And I absolutely put that out there. I did say during the debate on the Late Late Show that I do believe that that statement was made by our Taoiseach without properly explaining to the people that, in fact, what he was suggesting would be unconstitutional. But it wouldn't be. There's nothing in the Constitution that says, and I have to press you on it, there's nothing in the Constitution that says uh, the seal of the confessional legally. No, what it does but, but, say... But you could be faced with that, because you said some of these things might come before you. We're pretty certain that one will come before the next president. No, because... You have freedom of religion and also just common sense that if people who are abusing know that a priest would be able to stand up in a court of law, they would never go. No, but that's your belief. But I mean, oh, no, no, the, no, 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 that's, no. That's but if the government, the government of the day with a huge majority believes that that is what they're going to do. Now, the government of the day puts it to you. You have to decide. Are they going to sign it, or what other alternative have you got? Well, well, a former judge in the Supreme Court and a number of barristers discussed this recently um, on on our TE, and they said that it would never pass because it is unconstitutional. Okay. But above that... Well, if it's unconstitutional, you would refer it back to the Supreme Court. You right? would refer it to the Supreme Court, but it would never, it would never come to that. But on saying that... It is absolutely right that people are concerned that children have been abused and have not been properly protected. Even though it is a minority, it is a horrendous situation. Right. Well, I have a texter here suggesting that you're an Irish Sarah Palin. How do you react to that? Uh, well, I don't know why they would uh, think that. I'm simply upholding the constitution of this country. Yeah, but you see... The problem is that if we if we look at the upholding the Constitution, and then we said at the beginning we wouldn't talk about it, but let's go there because this is quite important. Um, if you look at the last 14 years, to the best of my knowledge, how many times, it didn't occur once, did it, that it, presidents were referring things to the Supreme Court. So the actual chance that you would have to do that in normal course of activity 
is yes, tiny. There, there was There's all the other jobs though. But over seven years, you won't be you won't be referring stuff to the Supreme Court. What are you going to be doing for the next seven years as president if you're not referring stuff to the Supreme Court? Well, there, Supreme there have Court? been referrals to the Supreme Court. No, but Court. what are you going to be doing? Let's but, say but there's you're none. Right. That, Let's that's, say there's none. That's the, that's the one aspect and a main aspect of protecting the people's right to self-determination and what happens to their constitution and a huge bulk and you're quite right a huge bulk of the work of the president is to be of service to the people and the welfare of the people to be an ambassador for the people but i think george you know more and more people in this country who are seriously hurting families who are seriously hurting need to know that a president is going to identify with them is going to be with them stand with well, how them. are you going to do that well, you know, just like today, being here in Cork, being able to go to the homeless facility of St. Vincent de Paul. I mean, I don't want to go to a place just to have photographs taken. I want to stand and listen. And you can highlight, by standing with people, you can highlight. I would also want to suggest that there be a, a forum, because the president is the direct choice of the people. The president is the people represents the people, that the people should be able to petition, say, 100,000 signatures, where they can talk directly to their president, right. and I can address the houses of the Oireachtas or the nation. But the, the Sean Gallagher, for instance, is, is, is really saying, look, I'm a president for jobs. Uh, Gay Mitchell has said he's putting suicide first and foremost in his campaign. Uh, uh, Martin McGuinness comes from a certain background uh, that clearly will influence the way he will be president. Um, what's Dan as presidency? If you could put Dan as presidency in a sentence, what would it be? Oh, well, for the people. And of course that will include trying to promote Ireland as a place that's good to do business. That's why with the worldwide experience I've had, both through Europe and through the world in different aspects, to draw together all of those people so we have, if you like, an army of ambassadors who are promoting a self-confident image. And we want jobs, but, you know, we also want economic security but we want we want a, a country that also has values and ethics in it all right now i've seen you in many guises uh but not everybody has um what is there about dana that maybe up to now people haven't seen but you think they should see because it would uh, affect their decision to vote for you as president well i am an independent i am not a mouthpiece for anyone or any organization I am very tolerant of other people's beliefs or non-belief, and, and I do respect others. I mean, I, I was the first in this country to pull together an independent coalition. I wrote to every independent councillor and TD and senator, and it was uh, a fantastic coming together for the first time of independence. Shane Ross signed it, David Norris signed it, Finian McGrath signed it. We had a, a really, from left to the right spectrum. See, it doesn't matter to me what other people believe or, or where they stand politically. If we can stand together for the good of the people of this country, okay. that's what you have right. to do in life. Okay, if we look, go back 14 years, you got almost 15% of the vote. Roughly the same figure, in fact, as you got uh, when you won a seat for Europe. Now, 15% isn't going to get you elected, obviously, e even if you do that again. You get another 175,000 votes. Where do you think the transfers are going to come from? When you look at the other six out there, um, because they'd be falling away. Where do you see those transfers? Who, who's, who's more like you out there whose votes would, would swing to you? Well, I've always had transfers from right across the political parties and none. I've always had transfers, and that's why I think I was elected into the European Parliament. That's why I even got, um, you know, in the first place, I had such a high vote. So right across the spectrum. I mean, as far as crossing bridges that have been built... My position as, you know, being raised in the north, I mean, Ian Paisley launched my book instalment, Martin McGuinness attended, and the Ulster Unionist Party attended, Albert Reynolds attended. We had sports people, 
we had show business people, we had ordinary people who never thought they'd step foot inside Stormont, from north and south, from Catholic, Protestant and no religion. And, you know, as was said by uh, Tommy Gorman that night, it was the best party that ever happened. Because what makes life, in every family you have it, in every community you have it, it isn't finding what divides you. It's finding what unites you. And if we don't find what unites us for the people of this country, then we are not going to succeed. And if they can't trust the person who is carrying the duty of protecting them, we need trust. We need confidence. So what you're, uh, am I paraphrasing it, but what you're saying is you can trust Dana. Is that yes. what it amounts to? They can trust me. They know that I have no affiliation. I'm independent. I, I was never on a board. I was never on any kind of board because I was, you know, I, I'm just an ordinary person. I was raised in a council estate. I lived in the Bogside Flats. I've had ups and downs in my own life and career. This country is in a, a t difficult okay. time now, but we're going to make it through. All right, final question to you. I, and it's back to where we started at the very beginning. Do you really want to be President Dana, or are you using this campaign to essentially get your views across where we may hear them in another forum or another election? I would not want to undertake the rigours of this and put my family through it simply to kind of fly a flag. If the people will trust me to be their candidate, um, to be their president, then I can definitely protect them. I can definitely represent them, and I would be very honoured to do so. So I can take that as a yes, then. You really want yes. to? Yes. All right. That is presidential candidate Dana uh, with me here in Cork in the Opera Lane studios. Coming up next, we'll uh, look at the dangers of a Friday night out. Dana, thank you so much thank for joining you, me. Thank you, George. Bye-bye.